you're about to sit for the Cisco CCNA exam and you want to see what the exam format's going to be like, I'm Ronnie Wong, Edutainer here at IT Pro TV, and we're about to have some fun. So what we're going to take a look at here is going to be the exam format as well as some sample questions. And I've invited Anthony Sequera here to be with me and he's going to take my exam. So Oof. Anthony, are you ready to have some fun? I really am. And there's a lot of pressure here on me. There really is. Yes. So as we get started, right, uh, the, the strange thing about this particular exam is that the great thing is we don't have any simulations. So that's a, so, so a little bit off your brain there. That's yeah. a huge surprise. So right. no Sims in the new CCNA. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no Sims, but it is a lot of different questions. But the types that we'll actually get are kind of standard ones. Multiple choice. Okay. Okay. Multiple answer. In other words, you have to pick more than one. So usually you saw pick two, something like that. You also have to deal with some diagrams, of course, what well, routing and switching, you got to deal with diagrams. You also have the idea here, of course, of taking a look at some other exhibits. So like show outputs, okay? okay, or messages, things like that, that you have to be able to interpret and figure out what's going on. And of course, the all famous drag and drops, where you have to be able to drag and drop them into the right category. And this one, you have to be very careful. Sometimes it'll give you a list of 10. Sometimes it'll only give you enough to actually fill out but they tell you like, hey, you might use some or you might not use any of them. Okay. So you actually have to figure that one out too. All right, so Anthony, are you ready to see the first type of question? I'm here? ready. So I'm Thank guessing you. we start with the straightforward multiple choice style? We do. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first question here. So multiple choice, which is an example, example excuse me, of user awareness of a security program? Wow. A user receives an email from a branch office with an attachment but notices in the subject line there's unusual characters and misspellings, okay? User must use a password manager according to the company's security policy. The endpoint security protection uh, quarantines files from a user's workstation, or D, user plugs in a USB drive uh, to a workstation he found on a table when dining at a local restaurant. So you have to pay attention here to the question is the key. All right? This is so hard, dude. What, what's going on? This is CCNA. Well, that, okay. That's what we think. Yeah. Okay. I can handle this, I okay. think. Yeah. So I'm going to go through my strategy right. for the CCNA as we do this. I'm going to get rid of D. D. So the user's plugging in <laughs> something they found at a restaurant. No way. Okay. Um, user awareness of a security program. Mm -hmm. C, I'm going to eliminate. All right. The endpoint security protection quarantines, that's yeah. all taking place right. without them being aware of anything. So I'll right. toss that that's one good. out. So for me, it's going to be between A and B. Uh, B, the user must use a password manager according to the security policy, or the user receives an email from a branch with an attachment but notices the subject line. I'm going to go with A. That's my final answer. That's right. And I believe it's what they would learn through probably training. That's it. Yep. Did I get it? You got it exactly okay. right. So I knew it was A or B. For keywords, you were right. I put in that word notices there. So that's the way that I also uh, figured I like out it. something like that as well. But that's just an example of multiple choice. So, right, so we get to go on to the next round here. And let's talk about the idea of multiple correct and multiple choices here. Okay. Now, this one's a little bit harder as we start to take a look at it. And this is about the example of what is a valid JSON formatting. And you have to pick two from here. And this one means you have to know the actual JSON formatting. Wow. So that one's a little bit more challenging for us. Wow. So, so if we two screen are that, that correct. may have to, to, to do Yeah. That our producer, Courtney, um, uh, can bring that full screen. That would, Perfect. Thank you so much, Courtney. My gosh. I two know. of these are correct. Uh, okay. So I'm going to adopt the same strategy. Okay. So I'm going to eliminate B because I see square brackets there mm -hmm. um, enclosing the the uh, key and value pairs. Right. Don't like it. B is out. Great. Uh, oh my gosh, this is tricky. This one now, is tricky. Now, those aren't arrays and there's the square bracket usage again in D. So I'm going to go ahead and say that both A and C are valid JSON formatting. I've got the double uh, <laughs> best of luck yeah. uh, things. Did yeah. I get it? You've got one out of two. So you've oh. got C, but the, the way that this actually, well, I'm, I'm lying to you. You actually did get it right. I moved some of these things around as I transferred them in. Okay. So you are absolutely correct. Oof. Yeah, so you have to pay attention here, but something like that is very possible. Okay. So now just so we can 
toss in a learning moment here. Am I correct, Ronnie? The square brackets, we're using those with array type. Arrays, yep. Okay. All right. And then the A is actually the value pair that you're normally seeing. Yep. And then C is actually a true array that we would Okay, so see. we didn't have arrays. So nope. that's how we could toss out those square brackets. Yep. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Now, here's fairly typical. You notice that there is an exhibit, and of course that means it's gonna be about routing. You see IP addresses that are here. So we may wanna go ahead and full screen this and take a look at it a little bit closer. Yeah, I'm skipping this so one. Now, this is way hard, dude. I'm totally skipping yeah. this one. So essentially you see that we've got connected by an ethernet, and okay. now you see some IP addresses. So this one's a little bit harder, uh, and we have to go to the question here. So OSPF has been configured between router one, router two, and router three. That's actually the one that's connected by the ethernet. You have full reachability. Now, on the exam, you actually have this directly in front of you on our slide. We did. Sure, that. sure. Okay. So, so the, have, the diagram's above, so right. you don't have to, like, page between. Yeah. Okay. So you have full reachability. Uh, you have uh, the quad ones. Must be able to reach the quad threes. Now, if I kind of go back, you'll actually take a look at that. That's router one and router three. You have okay. the quads there. So that will actually help you out. And let me see if I can go back. Okay. A floating static route has been created between R1 and R3. You see the static route in the table. What will happen when OSPF comes back online is what you want to actually see here. Static route will remain in the table until it's removed. Interface S01, the floating static route that zero interface on R1, will have to be shut down so that OSPF can get back in the routing table. C, OSPF will take over the route without any additional configuration. D, you must issue a clear IP OSPF process to make OSPF reinstall the route back into the routing table. I so think this is C. But that that's this is a trick question, it is. isn't it? Yes. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So I would have hit C and I'm wrong. No, C it? is actually correct. Oh, yeah. thank so, goodness. Yeah. No, you were right. So okay. the you might be wondering, like, oh my gosh, am I gonna see questions like this? It's possible. Okay. Yep. They and this is something that you want to know. It looks like they are intentionally trying to mislead you by throwing in a bunch of extra stuff you don't really have to do. Okay. And that's so why I was like, stuff, man, there's C almost seems too obvious yeah. to me, and then I second guess myself. And that's what happens. And so okay. that's where you have to slow down and read it, and you really have to pay attention to details on this particular type of question. Because if you don't, you'll be overwhelmed by just taking a look at the graphic itself, and then you think that you're going to weed through all this, and you actually take a look, and you're like, oh my gosh, the question is, is two-thirds two of the actual uh, page that's filling up, and it'll overwhelm you. So slow down, but you'll actually be able to handle it fairly easily. This is the most fun I've ever had. All right. This is so fun. So now, of course, we'll output uh, is what Ooh, we see. Okay. So here we'll have to full screen it again. And at the top of the screen, at the this is what we are seeing here. Okay. So you actually notice that it's saying, hey, look at all this stuff. And uh, there is a lot of it going on. After configuring native VLAN on switch one, you see the above messages. What is the configuration on S2 that will stop these messages and then below, we have the configuration here that we need. Now, there's four of them, and there's a ton of text again, Anthony, as we start to take a look. But there's only one of these that will actually end up matching. So I'm not going to read through every single one of them because you can see them. But Ronnie, that's what you have to do. Yep. I am so impressed with your question authoring skills. And yep. if anyone from Cisco is watching, they're <laughs> going to offer you uh, a job uh, for sure. Wow. Okay, so the output on switch one, Ronnie, is telling me that I have a native VLAN mismatch. Right. And it's amazing how verbose it is. Yeah. It's saying that it's 99 on switch one. Mm -hmm. And on switch two, it's set to uh, one. one. So the native VLAN is the default on switch two. It's 99 on switch one. So Courtney, if we could have that full screen just one more time, I'm going to say that we can correct this by going to switch to all of them. Okay, so here, I'm gonna go back to that elimination, uh -huh. Ronnie. I'm gonna eliminate D. All right. Because setting the native VLAN over on switch one to 999, not gonna help us. Great. D is out. D's out. All right, now all the other three are on switch two, and to get this to work, I think we are going to throw out A. Right. Because switch port mode access, not gonna help us. So now it is between C and B, 
and I see interface range being utilized. Do we need that? We do. So I think B. Right. Yeah. That was wicked wasn't that, hard. Wasn't that unusual? Yeah. It was. And if you're going too fast, mm -hmm. you grab C. Automatically, because your brain just goes, ah, wow. no big deal. I see the native mismatch, uh, VLAN mismatch. It's yep. on switch two, and your brain just automatically selects it. So you want to slow down again. Take a look at every line in the output that they show you. This critical update that you've put together, Ronnie, is not only showing us the uh, the question types and giving us sample questions, but this is also a really cool review of exam taking right. tips. Yeah. So, all right, so here's our final one, okay? Now, I have a chance to get them all right. <laughs> you do. Yeah, so drag and drop is oh our final gosh, one. Oh my I'm not getting this. <laughs> I can't believe you did this to me. And I have to reuse, right? Because yes. you only have four objects on the left, but right? six slots on the right. Yeah, so you may get something like that where you have to reuse them, but sometimes you may get more than that where you don't have to use any of them. So here, you actually notice that we're describing the idea of pull model, push model, Python, YAML, and Ruby. So okay. and then we have the different uh, orchestration uh, software over on the right-hand side. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So Python and YAML, I know for sure that's Ansible. Chef and Puppet, I know for sure are Ruby. Okay. Oh my gosh. Good so far. This push versus pull <laughs> model is so hard. Uh, when I'm using Ansible to configure the nodes that I manage, I am taking a command or full playbook, and I think I'm pushing it down to those devices. So I think Ansible's push, and I would guess Chef and Puppet are pull? Almost. Yeah. <laughs> it was backwards. That, <laughs> yeah, so, but it happens, yeah. Okay, so the the... The, uh, the pull model is Ansible, mm -hmm. and that's, I guess, because we reach out to the managed node and get information right. from it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's tricky. Yeah. yeah. So you have to pay attention to the elements that they're describing here. And I know Ansible well, don't know Chef and Puppet well enough. If I did, I would have probably been able to figure out better which is push and which is pull. Right. Also, the bad news for me on this one, Ronnie, even though I got most of them right, I didn't get this question right because right. I messed up the push first pull. Aren't you happy? <laughs> when we did this in Encore, you missed one, I and did. that's exactly what I right. missed. So overall, though, okay, we wanted to make sure that we did this particular type of sample format for us to show you how you could actually get through, but also the types of questions that you'll see on the CCNA exam as well. So this is a great place to take a little bit of time, review some of these concepts again before you get started. Check out the playlist to see more critical updates and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Ronnie Wong and thanks for watching this critical update.